Hello everyone! In this tutorial we explain how to derive a differential equation describing the dynamics of a tank filled with a liquid. Furthermore, we will explain how to simulate this dynamics in Simulink. More precisely, by using first principles and basic laws of fluid dynamics, you will learn how to derive this differential equation describing the dynamics of the liquid level inside of the tank. Furthermore, in this video tutorial, you will learn how to model and simulate this nonlinear differential equation in Simulink. Here is a block diagram that models the differential equation. If I press run over here, the simulation will run, and if I double click on scope, I will see two curves. The blue curve represents the liquid level inside of the tank and the yellow line represents the input flow rate. Ok, let's start with the problem formulation. We consider a tank with a cross-section area of A filled with an incompressible fluid. The fluid level at the time instant t is h. The input volumetric flow rate to the tank is denoted by qin, where in stands for an input. The output volumetric flow rate of the tank is denoted by q out. We assume that the output flow is passive, that is, we assume that this q out output flow rate is not actively controlled. Furthermore, we assume that the cross-section area of this hole is much smaller than the cross-section area A of the tank. We assume that we can control the input flow rate QIN. Our goal is, number one, to derive a differential equation describing the change of the fluid level H as the function of time and as the function of QIN. Then, for a given initial fluid level h of 0 and for a given time series of qin, our goal is to numerically solve and simulate the solution of the derived differential equation in MATLAB and Simulink. Ok, let's start with modeling. On the left part of this figure, we show the fluid level h at the time instant t. And here it is. After an infinitesimally small amount of time, denoted by dt, due to the input flow, the fluid level is changed to h plus dh, that is, its change to this level, the level at the time instant t plus dt. The level change is marked by this purple area over here. In reality, this is a three-dimensional volume. The volume change is actually dH multiplying A, where A is the area of the cross-section of the tank. The rate of change of the fluid volume during this small time interval is dH multiplying A over dt, and this is equal to dH over dt multiplying A. On the other hand, this term over here, dH over dt, is the velocity of the fluid in the tank. In the general case, the flow rate is the product of the fluid velocity and the area through which the fluid flows. That is, Q is equal to AF multiplying VF, where AF is an arbitrary area and VF is the velocity of the fluid. Taking all these things into account, we can actually see that this equation is actually a flow rate that's being accumulated inside of the tank. This flow rate is a difference between the input flow rate and the output flow rate. On the other hand, since the output flow is passive, we can use a very well-known formula that's derived in our previous tutorial for the output flow rate. Here is the formula. Over here, CD is the discharge coefficient and G is the gravitational acceleration constant. We can write this equation like this, where C now becomes CD multiplying square root of 2G. Next, we can substitute this equation, that is the equation 6, in the equation 4, and we can obtain the equation number 8. If we divide the equation number 8 by A, we obtain the equation number 9, 
And this is the final form we use for the simulation of our system in MATLAB. Okay, let's start with MATLAB and Simulink modeling. First, let's summarize our differential equation. Here it is. dH over dt is equal to 1 over a multiplying the input flow rate qin minus c over a multiplying square root of h. Our first step is to define the model parameters. The model parameters are a and c. Over here I assume that the tank has a circular cross-section with a radius of 1. Consequently, the area is pi multiplying by 1. Next, I will assume a discharge coefficient of 0.6 and consequently the constant c will be defined like this. In order to simulate our system in Simulink, we need to specify the input data structure. Later on, we will import this data structure into the Simulink model. To do that, we first need to define the time for the simulation. The time will start from zero, it will end at 10, and in between, we will have equidistant time samples where the sampling period will be 0.01. Next, my input flow rate will be absolute sine function defined like this, nothing special. Then, I'm defining over here the input data structure. I'm specifying the signal one, and this will be our input flow rate dot values will be equal to the input flow rate. And over here, I'm specifying the dimensions of my signal one, and that's one. Evaluate this section to load it into the MATLAB workspace and type whose to make sure that all the variables are over there. They are input data structure and input flow rate. Now, if you type input data structure over here, you will see that you will have time and signals. And this is precisely what we need to know in order to simulate the system in Simulink. Our next goal is to model and simulate this differential equation in Simulink. Consequently, open Simulink and then click on blank model. Over here, I will write once more our differential equation. It looks like this. dH over dt is equal to, let me erase this, is equal to 1 over a multiplying q input minus c over a multiplying square root of h. Let's start with modeling. First of all, we need to import the time series defining the input flow rate. To do that, we will use the so-called import block. So click over here, that is double click anywhere on this workspace and type import. Here it is. Okay, expand it such that you can nicely see it. Then click over here on modeling, then click on model settings. Then click over here on data import export, click on input, and over here, instead of this block, or better to say this matrix over here, type input data structure. This will actually import our input data structure containing the time series of Q input to the Simulink workspace and click on OK. OK, now let's verify that this block actually works properly. We will add here a scope and then we will erase this scope later on since we will not need it currently. Then connect this block with this block, double click on this block make sure that the port number is 1, that is, we will plot only a single signal representing the time series of QIN and click on OK. Now, click on simulation and click on run. And let's see the output. Let's hope that there will be no errors. OK, let's double click on scope 
to see the output and here it is. Congratulations! We were we are actually able to successfully import the input time series. Okay, close this block and erase scope. This block represents QIN. Next, we need to multiply QIN by 1 over A. Consequently, over here, double click and type gain. And here is the gain. Expand the gain. Then connect this block with the gain. Move gain a little bit over here. Double click on the gain. And here is the gain. We need to type 1 over A. And over here, you will notice that Simulink is able to directly access the variables in the MATLAB workspace. This is because we evaluated the script previously. Click OK. Perfect. Now we have this term, 1 over A multiplying QIN. However, we need this term over here. First of all, we need the minus sign over here. Double click here and type sum. Here it is. Expand the sum block. From this side, we have plus since the sign over here is plus. So simply connect this block to our summation, then double click on summation and over here change this sign to minus. Click OK. Good. Next we need this term C over A. OK, it's a simple gain. Double click, type gain. Here it is. Now I will rotate this element a little bit, click on format, over here rotate, then go back on simulation, then click over here, expand this element, double click, and this will be C over A, and click on OK. Good. Connect this block to the summation, and now we have minus C multiplying A. However, we need the square root. Double click again and type SQRT. Here is our SQRT function, then click on format, rotate this like this, connect this block over here, and that's it. Okay, notice over here that it's written U, however, in our case is H. From this equation, it actually follows that H is an integral of everything on the right-hand side. That is an integral of 1 over A multiplying QIN minus C over A square root of H. And the integration, of course, is over time, dt. Okay, so now we need to actually create an integral term over here to get H. So we need an integration over here, and after that, we'll simply connect the integration to our square root of u. So let's do that. Double-click over here and type integrator. Here it is. Connect it over here. Connect the output of the integrator to our square root function, and here it is. That's it. What's happening over here? Here's our input multiplying this constant, 1 over a, then we have plus sign over here, we have a minus sign over here, we have c over a, this gain, we have our square root of function, and the output of the integrator produces u, that is h, and goes inside of this block. Perfect. Now, let's add a scope. However, before we add the scope, let's add a mux. Put a mux here, and mux will enable us to plot on the same graph two different functions. Connect the output of this block, that is this term over here, to the one port of the mux, this will be our h, and over here connect this part or this port of mux to our input. Consequently, on our scope we will be able to see both the input and the simulated level. Then click over here and type scope. Here it is. Expand scope and connect it to MUX. Perfect. Now we are ready to simulate. Click over here and click on run. Hopefully you will not see errors. Then double click on scope. 
and you will see the simulation. This yellow curve represents the input flow, that is, it represents QIN, and the blue curve or the blue function represents the simulated water level. It looks quite logical. When the input flow rate goes up, the water level goes up, etc. Perfect. Now, here we simulated the response of the system to zero initial fluid level h. That is, this simulation assumes that h of zero is zero. However, we can change that. Let's learn how to set the initial conditions. We can easily set the initial conditions by double clicking over here and by specifying the initial condition. For example, let's start the simulation from one. Click on apply, close and click on OK, then click run again and you will see the difference in the simulation results. Double click over here and voila, you can see a big difference. We have initially the water level to one, then since we have the output flow, the water level will go down, go down, go down, and then this input flow rate will kick in and the water level will oscillate. Okay, that's all for today.